Christine Cornet, who is Faptagor, who represents Faptagor, Leila Slimani, who is an author and the ambassador for the French language, Michel Albarecht, who is a wonderful translator, who's recently translated um, Margaret Atwood and John, Bel John Belleville. <laughs> and we have Chinboy Guha, who is a professor and translator as well. So we're going to start, I'm going to ask David to start by talking about Actsud, who has done a lot of translations, and to tell us about the actual process of how it works for them, the translation process, and how that contributes to good literature and literature that can travel the world. Um, okay, does it work? Yeah, it's, it works, it's working. Uh, so Actsud is an independent uh, family publishing house. It has been founded uh, more than 40 years ago now, in 1978. Um, I wasn't born that time, but um, it was um, so. It was very, very small at the beginning, and then it grew. At first, it was like a, a publishing house on different things like geography and statistics, which is strange uh, when you know actors now. But it became um, uh, the DNA of the publishing house was at the very beginning the foreign uh, literature and translation. It was really. Um, uh, an interesting time uh, because there wasn't a lot of publishing houses taking taking the risk to publish foreign literature and, and translation. Only I think Christian Bourgois and, and, and Gallimard and more, of course. But I think yeah, Actosud was one of the major publishing houses or like little major publishing houses uh, translating uh, literature. And um, after that, it grew uh, gradually and um, and through different successes. And now we are also publishing uh, French literature and still, of course, uh, translation and, and, and um, foreign literature. Uh, so we work, of course, closely uh, with the uh, translators, with many translators. I have to say and thank um, Rajesh Sharma, who is our main uh, person um, for the collection uh, of Indian literature uh, through Actosud. He's the one who created the collection and this amazing partnership with Indian culture and literature at the very beginning of the, I mean, it was at the end of the, of the 90s, but it was one of the first collection uh, working uh, on, on Indian literature. And we published, I mean, Actus Suite published, thanks to Rajesh, many authors, like Anuradha Roy, uh, more recently Amitav Ghosh, and, and many more. So we are very glad. and. Rajesh has like was a um, is still a, an amazing uh, partner and we work very closely with him. Um, regarding the translation process, it's um, it's quite easy and practical, but it, we work with different agents. Uh, Rajesh select selects um, different projects through the agents and through uh, direct relationships with uh, publishers in India, um, and he sends us like the projects that it seems to be the good fit with, with Actors Sud. And then internally we decide uh, if we want to maybe pursue the adventure with, uh, with what we received and what he submits to us. Uh, and from there we work, we try to find the right fit uh, for the translators. Uh, we try to, r to work with translators from different languages, not only in, in English, and that's, of course, one of the main difficulties because there's not a lot of translators for, from uh, Bengali, for instance, or, or Hindi even. And so it's always difficult but very, very interesting to find the right fit to, to translate into, into French. And, and do you have, in the process of the translation, is there a lot of discussion between you and the translators? Uh, how does that work? Do you, do you, is there a lot of rereading, questioning? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. There's a first... So the first step is to um, accept the translation that we receive from the translator. And then there's many readings happening, uh, um, an editorial uh, reading. Um, because we don't know the language uh, usually, except, of course, if it's in English and it's easier. But if we don't learn uh, know the language, we try to read just the translation, translation in French, sorry, and uh, to see if there's like some weakness weaknesses in the in the language but just the reception in French of course. And we work with Rajesh for like the kind of parallel uh, reading from the, the original to the French uh, <laughs> translation. And then there's simple um, I mean there's advanced uh, readings in terms of editing, um, grammatical editing of course and different things. And after that it's just like 
the, the process of the production begins uh, within Actor Suite. But there's a, a, yeah, there's a lot of works, uh, a lot of work with the translators, and um, and it's it's always um, something. I, I don't know if you had this experience, Leila, but um, when I speak to a, 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 a translator and an author, and usually an, the author, um, he 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 tells me that it's. Um, for him, it's very important to have a relationship with a translator. It's he's all he's he or she is always surprised when he or she doesn't uh, have a, a contact, like uh, some questions from the translator. He's all, they're all usually very uh, surprised because they they think that I mean you shouldn't um, understand everything from their work right away, you know, and so they're very disturbed by the fact that there's silence and no contact and I think it's very and it's always an advice or something that I said to a translator try to contact the even even if you don't have questions make some <laughs> and try to send him like or her some questions because it's very important to build a relationship with the author it's not only about one book it's about the work and there will be a you know a, yeah there will be you have to build a relationship. It's not only the publisher, it's also the translator who needs to do that. So that's one of the advice that I always give to a translator. And I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's yeah. good to do that. Okay, so right now I'm going to ask you, as you've been translated recently and you've had the experience on the other side, how yeah, do you yeah. feel about your translators and the relationship with them? I think it's a very good advice because um, I'm going to make a metaphor that, that people will understand, but it's like giving your book, you know, it's your baby and you're giving it to someone else and it's like a perfect nanny and you want him to take really good care of your little baby. So, yeah, it's very important for me to have little contact with, uh, with the translator. So, of course, it's different if it's someone who's translating in Chinese or in Uzbek or Armenian because I don't understand the language. So, I can't really help him when he has some difficulties, but for English or German or Spanish, I have now very, very close relationship with my translators and some of them are very close friends because, you know, they know things about me that no one knows. They know me very deeply. They read all my book, all my chronicles, my articles, so they know my obsessions, they know what I fight for, they know my weakness probably uh, also, so I have, um, I trust them very much. And um, I will tell you a little anecdote. My book, Adele, is a book about a woman who is a, a sex addict. And there are a lot of sex scenes in the, in the book. And in French, you can refer to the genitals by saying le sexe, le sexe de l'homme, le sexe de la femme, which is impossible in English. You can't do, do it like that. So the beginning of my relationship with my English translator, who is a close friend now, was a very long and precise discussion about do sh should I put penis or dick or vulva or and I was like oh I don't know this man and I feel so uncomfortable to have <laughs> this discussion with him but at the end we had to talk about that so we were all day long talking about penis vulva no no put vagina here yes very good so now we are very close friends and we always make we always having a lot of love when we remember that can I just ask you do you find that your translators sometimes ask you questions about your work that you've never thought of? Do they kind of see yes. things that you've never dreamt of? Absolutely. My, my Czech translator is obsessed by windows. And uh, each time I, I describe a window, he send me tons of pictures of different windows. And he asked me, is it this kind of window or this kind of window? So I don't know what is the problem of Czech people with windows, but <laughs> I think they have a lot of words for windows. And my Japanese translator also is, you know, she always wants to add even more violence, and I don't know why. She, she always says, okay, Len, you say blood, but can I add some sweat and something? I'm like, no, I think <laughs> it's enough. Don't add. So she's a little bit uh, weird, but uh, and when I met her, actually, she's funny, but by email, she's a little bit frightening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michelle, I'm going to ask you to talk about your experience as a translator. So, it's, um, it's so funny. Um, I've been translating John Benville for years. And um, so usually I, I try not to bother um, my authors before, but at the end. Is it working? Yeah. 
And so I called John and I said, well, John, I have a problem here because um, you're talking of a Roman guy, but actually the helmet he's wearing is more of a Gaulois. Oh, he said, for once, let him go. I mean, with a Gaulois helmet, and so is it. And uh, there was another time I was translating, um, I had translated Kepler, and Kepler reaches Tycho Brahe's place. And the enmity is immediate. So Tycho Brahe is a large guy, and Kepler, I mean, just... And Kepler comes there, and Tycho Brahe is eating some chicken, and he is picking at a bone. And I said, well, John, are, are you trying, I mean, to show the, to underline the enmity between the two guys. He said, no, I hadn't thought of that. But could you, by any chance, put us into the French, please? So I tried to do my best. And those stories are something intimate, true enough, I mean, between a writer and his translator. And then just, can you tell us a bit about the process afterwards when you've done your translation? I mean, you have... The process afterwards, when you've done your translation, when you've given it in, do you work then closely with the publisher when there are uh, questions, reworking? You know, how does that... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course, first the questions, I mean, to the author, and then I can sort. Um, you know, there, there are things that we don't know. We have our limits, of course. But there is something else, which is the intention of the writer. And uh, Leila mentioned the fact that, uh, true, the translator is so close to the writer. Um, we know a lot uh, about you. But sometimes, what is the exact intention? I mean, there, there can be two, possibility, two possibilities. And when you want to be right, because as I said, for me, to translate is to pay attention to the rhythm, to the music. Of course, I mean, you have to be close to your text. You have a frame, and <laughs> you have to work within that frame. But the music as well of the text is crucial. Um, so you need to, to give that back, and sometimes you need to leave the, the original text for your translation to be very true to the original, but very true to the French language, I mean, for me. And then after that, I give my text to my editor and I say, I need your eyes now. Meaning, leave me one week, two weeks alone <laughs> so I can breathe again. And then we work together um, she has some suggestions. I agree, I disagree. If I disagree, I think we have to find a third way. So that, because eventually, um, it's not a question of ego. The one person that is going to judge the translation is the reader. And that's very important. I mean, of course, the writer, we respect. But the, the reader, that's the main thing, the main person that we have to respect. So after that, um, it goes to the printer. And then, I mean, there was a copy editor, of course. Then it goes to the printer, and it comes back, and we, I mean, uh, proofread it. And sometimes, I mean, we go to the a second proofreading. That doesn't happen regularly except for some books that are either very difficult or um, prestigious. Can I just ask you before we move on, uh, David, do you, have you, do you get translations sometimes that you read and you think, there's something wrong with this, the rhythm isn't there, it doesn't work, the music is missing in this book? Yeah, yeah, yeah it happens, and it's, a, and it's a, the fault of the publisher and the editor because it's always um, tricky to, I mean, it's, in Actors, we have like a, a lot of um, translators we are used to work with, 
and so we had like we built relationships as I was as I was saying, but um, I realized quite recently that it was for um, for inst for um, a, no a novel in Spanish. We have an, uh, tr like several amazing translators, but one of them was free at that time, and he is really one of the greatest translators that we have in Spanish. And so I asked him to translate that book, but because I th I thought that, and I still think that he's an amazing translator, I, I didn't realize that you really need to um, think about the novel as well and to identify the right person for the novel not necessarily think about the quality and the amazing constants, constancy and quality of the translator, but for instance, that novel in particular, there was a lot of work on humor. Humor is one of the, the, the most difficult things to, to translate, I think. And, 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 and he wasn't, a very, I don't think he's a very funny guy. <laughs> and, and so I think he, ha he had some difficulty to, uh, to reach the, the s subtle aspect of the translation. And, it wasn't a bad translation because he's an amazing translator, but it it lacked some kind of um, sensitivity and uh, in in terms of humor, and that's how I realized that. I mean, of course, you can be an amazing, the best translator, but maybe that book wasn't for you, you know. So yes, it's, uh, sometimes there's some examples that. Yeah, you you know that that was maybe a mistake, but then you just re like you work closely with the translator, and there's nothing problematic with that, so, mm. yeah. Can I add something? Yeah, I would like to say that I totally agree with what they say in the fact that I think that we need a chemistry between the, the author and the translator, and I think that we don't say enough that, yes, the translator translates, but he's also an author in a way. He's going to write a book that has not been written before. Even if I wrote um, Dans le Jardin de l'Or, I'm not really the one who wrote totally Adele because Sam Taylor, he put things in it that makes it a book and not only the translation of different sentences. So he creates something and I think he's someone who understands me. And just an anecdote that my German translator, she makes me read out loud sometimes some yeah. phrases just to understand the rhythm and the melody. So she phones me and she tells me, please read it to me and now I will understand. Maybe, maybe we could just say that. I'm asking uh, Laila uh, one thing, uh, because I've seen your English translations, and the Bengali one, of course, uh, because the jury is important. Uh, the, uh, the long list of thank yous did not include the jury, uh, of course. They decided. I Three of us are Jenuka, myself, I and Michelle. Anyway, just to come back. Uh, uh, Professor Moore, I stand corrected. I'm extremely <laughs> thankful to the jury for, uh, for giving us this Okay, and uh, so to come back. I'll talk about uh, our findings in the last three years. Uh, I want to ask uh, Laila a very important question. You know, you, translation is a very difficult work. C'est de la marche, c'est une marche sur la corde raide. It's, it's, it's tightrope walking. Maybe the first three paragraphs are fine. The fourth paragraph, there is a line which doesn't gel. Il y a quelque chose qui ne tourne pas rond. What happens there are, if there are passages in the novel which you don't like? I read your uh, English translation by Sam somebody. Yeah. Sam Taylor, I think it's very crisp, but does it always sort of uh, find the same wavelength? They're just asking you. You know, but we, as I said before, we email a lot and we, we discuss a lot. And sometimes when I feel that he's a little bit lost, to that he doesn't understand really that this part of the book is very much more important than he thinks and that he has maybe to to yeah, to emphasize on, on this part that is a little bit weak in his translation. I, I tell him, I think also that it's a, a relation, as I said, of trust, and uh, you have to be very honest. You, uh, there is no point of lying or being afraid of saying things because you don't want to hurt the, the feelings. Sometimes he tells me, I think that the way you wrote this, this passage is not as interesting as you could have done it, and sometimes I'm um, honest enough to tell him that I don't really agree with his translation, that he can do better, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a work where we are honest and we trust uh, each other. Maybe, I, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just, uh, because I totally agreed uh, with Leila about the voice, and I wanted as well, because it, it connects, I wanted to add something about what you said. For me, a translator as well uh, is like an actor. And it depends if you like, I mean, to try different 
uh, translation, different voices. And for me, it's a great pleasure. It's fun. How far can you go? And it's always exciting. Um, a lot of work. Now to go back to what you say. You know, I'm French. And even when I have my two feet deep in the shit, I sing. And so I'll say that I make mistakes. I have no doubt about it. We all make mistakes. Maybe Shinmoy doesn't. No ah, ah, because I was worried, I thought it was the only one. <laughs> Maybe, uh, well, as we are, so as Shinmoy said, we're part of the jury, Michelle, myself, and Shinmoy are part of the jury for the Romain Roland Prize. And, and, Annie. and Annie, Annie, who is unfortunately not here, and who should have really been the person who was and here today. Exactly. So, but she, you, did you read the Hindi as well? You it read could be answer. great to, but, re, to read in Hindi, to listen to the music of the Australian yeah, translation so from uh, Annie Monto. Maybe later. No, I just wanted to say that uh, Annie, some of Annie's comments on the Asterix yes. was, were absolutely wonderful. She was saying it was one of the translations that was the most inventive and creative and at the same time perfectly appropriate and that it wasn't just a translation. It was a huge work of adaptation, but it remained truly in the spirit of the books and that your cre she was astounded by your creativity and your inventivity and in this. No, it wasn't kindness. She's very severe when she reads. There is no, uh, there is no compromise. And he reads. She reads very, very severely. And she was really, really impressed with the work that's been done on the Asterix. So the, the members are, are very, very strict about everything. Michelle, Renuka, Annie, and others, and myself. But I can assure. <laughs> but I can tell you that Annie is the strictest of them. She analyzes every line, every word. She's harsh when it's bad. There, there, was, a, there was a translation of La Roche Foucault's Maxims, and she tore it to pieces. Uh, I, I, in your case, it's a cult. Uh, okay, okay, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, over, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, sum it up. Sum it up. Sum it up. It could be interesting for all of you just to give the data. In your case, it was a cultural translation, as uh, they said, so difficult to translate humor. And this was done, play of words, uh, it was really amazing. Now to come back to the kind of findings that we had, it's very, very important for all of us to remember that this Romain Roland Award is important. The name of Romain Roland, which was, uh, I think, extremely intelligently used, because Romain Roland is one of those who try to understand our huge country of 3,287,000 square kilometers with 1,600 languages. A man who tried to understand uh, the first biographer of Gandhi, the biographer of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, a friend of Tagore. Uh, and so man who really tried to understand. So therefore, it's a very, uh, I would say, uh, appropriate type name given to the award. What is important is, in this big bad world, what you badly need is idea. And this whole idea of giving an award to the best translation of French literature into Indian languages is remarkable and for which we should be grateful to Institut Francais. Uh, this beautiful idea, uh, because as uh, the, the translator said a little while ago, the translator needs his status. Many of us have read Kipsat's Nausea. How many of us know the name of the translator? Huh? When, Gabriel, when Gabriel Garcia Marquez got the Nobel Prize, he got the invitation from Stockholm, not Gregory Labassar, the translator who conveyed it to everyone in the world. So that is our problem. The translator remains la cinquième roue de la charrette, the fifth wheel of the cart. He's just a, a, a nobody sometimes. So we need to give a kind of identity. This award gives an identity to, uh, of course, Great, good translators have their identity, but it needed a status, uh, an identity. That's very, very important. This confluence of cultures, very, very important. This one important thing I would like to mention before we, I go into the details very fast is that you don't translate with your fingers. You translate with your heart, with your knowledge of the two languages, your knowledge, in a sense, of the history of the two languages. This is very important. It's, it's not a clerical work. It's a cultural work. He is not 
and uh, just um, uh, uh, he's not a kind of uh, contractual liberal. The translator is not a contractual liberal. The translator is a kind of creative mediator, a pilgrim of culture. We say it all the time, very, very important, cultural activist as she pointed out. Translation is a humbling business. Translators can be cannot be arrogant because he fails, he knows how difficult it is, it's a bloody battle. As I said a few days ago in Delhi, it's a deadly duel in which either the reader, uh, sorry, either the writer or the translator is dead. So there is a desperate attempt to keep both of them alive and it's not easy. Translator is a cosmopolitan person. What does cosmopolitan mean? Cosmopolitan means understanding of the others, uh, an idea of uh, knowing others, very, very important. So our, our, our conclusion, our conclusion, Jin Roy? Jin Roy? Uh, just sum up very quickly. Briefly, very brief, very just give brief. us a brief idea about in the last the three years. Of in, we've in, been the, in, the, in the last three years, it's important to tell you this, that we had 31 translations. 31 translations. Uh, 12, 10, and 9. In which languages? In English, in Malayalam, Tamil, Hindi, Bengali, and Marathi. Very important. And also, you must, we, we must note that there were books of poetry, fiction, non-fiction. And uh, we noted that uh, what is important in most cases is that uh, the translators dare to do difficult texts. Régis Debray, for example. They, they wanted to do difficult texts, uh, in, uh, in especially in uh, Malayalam and Tamil, and it was a ex good experience for all of us. There's a, there's a general uh, apprehension that reading habits uh, are going down, but uh, the endeavors are extremely praiseworthy, uh, the endeavors of these bridge builders. And what is important is, apart from commonsensical virtuosity which we need, we found that there are slipshod errors. The publisher didn't even look that the dedication was not to Emil, whether, whether it was to Emil or Emily, it was not corrected. There were mistakes in the title, there were mistakes in the spellings, there were mistakes sometimes in the uh, tran uh, transposition of names from one language to another. This was, uh, there are, there, there were, there, some people are very casual about it. And uh, idiomatic expressions were not always properly translated. These are, these are some of the things which uh, irritated us. We thought that uh, the, the translator should have been more careful about the Chin, whole thing. I there think, are little imperfections. I think, Just a minute. Uh, we found it's, it's like, it's yeah. like uh, you know, translation is like a pane of glass. There are little imperfections, okay. bubbles, scratches. Ideally, they should not be there. It's not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes the translation, for example, I thought the translation of uh, uh, Laila Simani in English was perhaps smarter than the French one. As, as I thought, Justin O'Brien's translation of Camus outside was, more, was smarter than the French original. So the tuning is very important. But is that Thank the you. translator's role to be smarter than the author? I'm not really sure that's the case. <laughs> I think be. that. You can't be. You can't be. Thank you. <laughs> I really don't think that's the role of the translator. I think we're supposed to be uh, true to as far as possible. We d it's not our voice. It's the author's voice, and we're there to respect that. No, but we're not there to be smarter than the writer. We're, we're, we're there to share their voice with the rest of the world, and it should be their voice and their music. And otherwise, we shouldn't be translators. We should become authors in our own rights, if it bothers us, I think. <laughs> and we remain translators because we like being the bridges between cultures and because we want to share fantastic literature across the world. I think that's why people become translators, and that's what we seek to do in our work. And I think basically great literature requires good translators who are willing to dedicate themselves totally to the works they're translating, and willing to create and adapt and invent and look for new things. And I'm sure I don't know how long it took you to translate the Asterix, but... Um, But when you started out defining the names, choosing the names, all that adaptation work was phenomenal. I think when we started out, oh no, I mean, uh, you know, Puneet is my co-translator, so the credit is completely shared. And he's also the translator of Tintin in, in Hindi. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he used to tell me that I'm treating him like a slave because I know French and he doesn't. 
So he keeps telling me that, you know, I have to bank on what, what are the nuances that you're giving me. And then I have to come up with these kind of equivalences where we deliberating and, and all of that. But one thing which I'd like to point out for Asterix was, apart from the fact that, I mean, it's very different translating an extended narrative. We had Completely. frames within which the translation had to fit. And one of the yeah. toughest things about Asterix is the glissma, the sauce, the complete, you know, the, the multiple nuances of one word. Yeah. And how do you get an equivalent in another language with, you know, that, that multiplicity of... And with the humor, particularly, with transposing the humor. I think that was right. phenomenal. We were not translating from uh, only French. Mm. Because uh, these people, uh, you know, go to Belgium and, and, and they, they go fun at the Teutonics. Uh, there are different accents, there are Latin. There are so many things which are out there that we have to look at. So now he's planning to learn French. <laughs> oh, so congratulations. Sure what I'm thinking about is right. <laughs> But yes, it has taken a long time to, to get used to the idea of translating. But the second difficulty that it poses is that every book is a complete universe unto itself. Yeah. So when we're going from one book to another, uh, apart from the fact that Obelix says it's on full level math, but apart from certain you know, consistencies, you are coming across new narratives, new sound systems, mm -hmm. new nomenclature, new cultural constructs. Mm. So no, but not only does it require a huge amount of research for the context, it just requires all this research to come up yeah. with, uh, because she was saying the 221 thing was amazing, that it, what you had discovered in that was phenomenal. I won't go into the details of that, but uh, for people who have read, I think they'll know or they'll ask you afterwards. Christine, I would like you just to talk for a few minutes about the uh, Romain Rollin Prize and the Pathagor program and talk, tell, talk about the objectives of all of this. Yes, um, I'm, I'm, at first I would like to, to, um, to say that I'm very, very delighted to, um, to share with you, with the uh, eminent and famous uh, authors, translator, editor, publisher and professor uh, at Chinmoy. Um, what the French Institute and the, um, the Embassy of France in India tried to do um, it's with, uh, through the uh, PAPTAGOR program is re really to help Indian publishers to translate French titles into Indian languages with an S. And uh, what we discovered this last year, it's at the beginning uh, the, um, the Indian publisher translates French titles from English to Indian languages. And we realize that the book office is not in India to promote English, <laughs> even if it's Indian uh, title, uh, in French titles, even if the, the translation is very good. Because we have a so huge uh, diversity of the, um, of the uh, Indian languages, and this pluralism is really important to understand uh, for French audience, French readers. It's important to understand that India is like also um, European countries all together with a lot of diversity and identities. And we want to really encourage, highlight translators from French to Malayalam, Marathi, Punjabi, Hindi, of course. And one thing is very important to mention is that these last two years, the shortlisted title for the Prix Romain Roland, Romain Roland Prize, the best translation were from French to Indian languages. And you can, you can maybe uh, explain what you discovered. In fact, the, um, the French title translated in English were not so good compared with Marathi, and one, that was one was excellent, absolutely. But the, the, um, for example, this year, among the four uh, shortlisted, you have one Hindi, one Bengali, one English, and no English, no English, no English at all. Yeah, that. And I think it's it's um, it's reveals some, something about um, Indian linguistic environment. And uh, we, we really want to promote this diversity. I think it's about the choice of, of the books 
why do yeah. why do publishers choose what motivates you to choose a particular book over another one you know that i think in english we tend to be seeing um less really modern groundbreaking literature i think people uh, the uh, publisher who decided to translate leila's book into hindi is extremely brave because it's a very very different type of book it's a very into no the ogre is going to be in bengali or hindi hindi i think bengali so so do in bengali is is translating in uh, in hindi probably ready next year yeah yeah so i think it's brave because this is a really contemporary literature and i think in english we're not seeing that so much we're seeing far more classic works being translated into english and i think it's wonderful to see that in the other indian languages um there is a belief in the readership being ready and curious to want to discover what's happening today and i don't feel that publishers in english are taking that risk i don't see that happening so much in the in what's being chosen to translate into english but that's just maybe maybe i'm wrong <laughs> but that's that was just a feeling that uh, it's as if indians reading in english don't want to discover uh, what's happening today or it has to talk about india but i think we're in india so we want to read about somewhere else and again i think there's a huge world of children's literature out there in in france which is phenomenal which is totally different to a lot of what we find elsewhere but they're books that are really special and require even though they seem really simple because the translation is maybe not very long but i think they're hugely complex to translate especially if we want to respect all the choices which are often choices of not qualifying things of moving away from stereotypes of leaving space for children to discover and not providing them with the same stereotyped images of the world and i think we need to be really careful when translating that children's literature because otherwise we lose the specific nature and the the specific beauty of those types of works now was just <laughs> just an idea uh, maybe to help uh, publishers to translate more books from french into any indian languages would be to try and work with students as well yeah um because it, it would be i mean if you could see with you know that would be a help but something could come out i mean that's an idea to work on yeah i, I wanted to mention this point uh, because uh, uh, last year the french institute in india and french students with uh, you mean french students french together students, yeah Yeah. With Indian translators. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it could be a great. Uh, it's a great idea. Actually, um, what we tried to do, uh, and we started uh, last year, um, just before the Japulit Fest, it's a translation workshop with Indian students and one writer. Uh, last year, it was uh, Kamel Daoud, uh, an abstract of uh, Meurso contre Enquête. And this year we have the chance to uh, have a one-day uh, translation uh, workshop animated uh, by Renuka George. And um, the, st the students work on an abstract of uh, Chanson Douce. Uh, and it was really a success. And uh, last year we had, um, we, um, we had as partner GNU because we want also to work with universities so with the uh, language and french departments in university and uh, this year we organized this workshop in uh, alliance française with more than 40 students and they also this is also an opportunity to identify new talent new young translator new generation of different indian languages translator and um, as you know, this year India is the, the country guest honor of Paris Book Fair, but in 2022, France will be uh, the guest uh, country of New Delhi World Book Fair. So we encourage all the publisher and translator to prepare also this event because this crossed invitation is really an opportunity, it's a platform to more understand each other. And for the young generation, and because India um, is a very young country, 
So we really want to uh, have some very um, translator activist Moe, <laughs> a cultural activist, as you mentioned before, and again identified uh, translator and, and worked more and more with all the um, all the segment. I mean, the public, the publisher, the translator, and authors all together. Yes, just before you were speaking about literature for children, that's something that I love. I have two little children and I read them a lot of books and it's true that in France we are very lucky because we have a huge diversity of books for children. But I was quite surprised because um, I'm here, like I arrived three days ago and I had the chance to have a very nice guide in Delhi who knows a lot about the Hindu mythology. And he told me a lot of wonderful stories and then I went back home and I search on the internet to buy a book for my children in French about the, the Indian mythology because I think that everyone in France would love all those stories of elephant and kidnappings and rapes and wars and love and yeah that, that's really fascinating so I was wondering someone should do that, so should do a beautiful book about the, the Indian mythology and I'm sure that it would have a huge, huge success in, in France. So that's a, an idea for a publisher, but I, really I think it's, it would be really interesting. Okay, I imagine we're running out of time, but are there any questions from the audience? Do, would you like to say anything, ask us anything? <laughs> no? In which case we will... Then I think we can end. Thank you for being here. Thank you. To Request that you read right now to allow me to redeem myself. So can I just say two words, which is I really, really thank on behalf of Ajay Mahu, publisher of Books International, Puneet Gupta, my slave and my co-translator. <laughs> I really, really would like not only to thank the jury but all the other people who were shortlisted for this prize. It's always a pleasure it's a to come across the very good choice. Yeah, it's exciting. I think we stand humbled by no. all your comments. No, no, but it's exciting. You feel as if, well, this is something really happening here. And I wish we saw that more and more. It's like you say, translation is a humbling business. It is, it is a humbling business. You know, because everybody is talking right now about having a relationship with the author. And what do you do when the author is not around? You know, you are open a bit and you're sort of groping in the dark. And then you're trying to tell yourself that I hope I'm getting it right. So it's a huge act of responsibility. Groping in the dark. But you're groping yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we thank our speakers. Maybe please uh, the scarves as a token of thanks from the festival.